Hello there. Did you ever wonder why it is that some people make far more money than other people? You know, we live in the most remarkable society in the world where some people can be making one, two, three, four, five times, ten times as much as another person doing the same job. But many times we see salespeople who are making ten times as much as the person next to them at the next desk selling the same product to the same people at the same price under the same uh, competitive circumstances. Why does this happen? Well, about 30 years ago, as you know, I began studying and looking for the reasons for success and failure. And one of the things that I found is that there are formulas, there are specific methods applied and used by very successful people. And if you use the same methods, law of cause and effect, you start to get the same results. And the more I studied, the more I realized is this, is that everybody who's at the front of the line once started at the back of the line. That everybody who's doing well was once doing poorly. That everybody who was first was once last. How do they get to be first? And it's very simple. It is called the law of incremental improvement, the law of incremental uh, betterment, the law of continuous improvement. It's a very simple thing. You see, most of us start with no education, no knowledge, no skills. We go to school, we learn how to read and write and so on. We start our jobs and our careers. We have no knowledge, we have no skills. We, each time we start something new, we have to go back to the back of the line. Why is it that people get to the front of the line? It's very simple. Because they learn the things that the other people learn to get to the front of the line. Now, I have a question for you. If I could give you a formula that's guaranteed to work, and this formula has been applied for years and years, I've taught it to thousands of people, I've had countless of my graduates come back and say it works like a darn, and it works faster even than I predict, if I could give you a formula that would enable you to dramatically increase your income, would you try it for one month before you gave it up or passed judgment on it? In other words, would you try it for 22 days? You see, it takes 21 days to develop a new habit pattern of any kind, especially a positive habit pattern. Would you try it for 21 or 22 days, which is pretty much the number of working days in a given month? So you don't even have to try it on the weekends. Just try it during the week. If you would, then I'll give you this formula. And the formula is really quite remarkable. I call it the 1,000% formula. It will show you or anybody else how to increase your income by 10 times in the foreseeable future. But first, it begins with a question. And the question is this. Is it possible for you could you, if you really wanted to, if you really needed to, if you were absolutely determined, if you really, really wanted to, could you increase your overall productivity, performance, and output by one half of 1% per week? Let me write that down. One half of 1% per week. Over the next seven days, could you become 7% more productive? Could you do things just a little bit faster, a little bit a better, make fewer mistakes, get a little bit more done? Could you be one lousy, crummy half of 1% better over an entire period of seven days? And the answer is, yes, of course you could. You could probably be one half of 1% better by the end of the hour just by doing some of the things that you know that you should do. Well, here's my next question. Having done it for one week and becoming half a percent better, could you do it for the second week? Could you do it for seven more days, be one half of 1%, a little bit more productive, a little bit better performer, a little bit more efficient, a little bit more effective, and so on? And the answer is, of course you could. And you could because it's a little easier the second week than the first week if you're doing the seven things I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes. Now, having done it for the second week, could you do it for the third week? And the answer is, of course. And the seventh, fourth week? And the answer is, yes. So now, four weeks have gone past, one half percent per week, and where are you? Well, one half percent per week times four equals two percent over the course of a four-week month. Could you improve your productivity, performance, and output by two percent over the course of a month? And the answer is yes, of course you could if you really wanted to. Well, now here's the most remarkable thing. If you've done this for four weeks, you're starting to develop what we call the big mole. You're starting to develop momentum. You're starting to move a little bit. You're starting to get into the swing of it. It's a little bit easier each day to do the things I'm going to share with you in a minute. If you do that, you have to ask the next, answer the next question, is could you do this for one more month? Could you do it for the second month? And the answer is yes. And the third month? And the answer is yes. And the fourth month? Yes. And the fifth month? Yes. And so on. Could you do it for a whole year? And the answer is of course you could do it for a whole year because now you're starting to really get into the swing of it. You are really starting to enjoy the feeling of achievement, the feeling of getting things done, the feeling of growth. So you could do it for a whole year, if you really wanted to. 
So if you were to improve your productivity, performance, and output by 2% for an entire year, 2% times 13 weeks, which is how many weeks there are in a year, would equal 26%. One half percent per week, however you want to do it, it's 26%. Could you be 26% more productive over the course of a year? Some people will double and triple their income in the course of a year. If you really wanted to, you could be 26% more productive. This brings us to the second question. At the end of a year, you'll be 26% more productive, and all things being equal, you'll be making 26% more money, and maybe even substantially more. You're starting to like the idea of a little bit bigger paycheck and a little bit more respect and esteem from the people around you. You enjoy driving a bigger car, living in a better house, going to better restaurants. You kind of get into the swing of it, so here's the question. Could you do it for the next year? And the answer is, of course, because now it's become a habit. Now you're starting to roll. Could you do it for the next year? And the next year, and the fourth year, and the fifth year, and the sixth year, and the answer is, once you get into the swing of it, like high-performing men and women do, you could keep it up indefinitely. So here's what would happen over a course of 10 years. 26% compounded times 10 years, and of course it would compound because everything that you learned would affect everything else that you learned, would work out to 1,004%. In other words, you could increase your productivity, performance, and output by 1,000% or more over the course of 10 years by just simply following a series of simple steps that have been proven to work for years and years and years. You could become 10% more effective if you really wanted to. Now, does this method I'm about to show you work? Well, I can tell you this. I've had countless people come back to me and say it works in five years, it works in four years, it works in seven years, it works in three years. It's the most incredible darn thing. I met a man the other day who said he used this formula to increase his income 100 times over a nine-year period. In other words, 10 times and then 10 times more. Is it possible for you? It's entirely up to you. Let me give you the seven steps to increasing your income by 1,000%. These seven steps are a result of my years of research and a question I used to get over and over again from my students. They would say, you know, you've taught us so much on success and this and that and what to do. Could you give me a formula? Could you give me something that I could do every day, something I could get my hands on? So I sat and I thought, and it took me many, many months, even two years, as a matter of fact, before I finally came up with a seven-point formula, which sort of brings together the best of everything that's ever been found on success and achievement literature. And what it do, it does is it puts it together into a simple formula that costs virtually nothing that you can use every day. Actually, I call this the seven plus one formula. Here are the seven keys to the thousand percent formula. Number one, arise early. Arise early. Arise two hours before you have to be somewhere first thing in the morning, and read for 60 minutes each morning. Read for 60 minutes in something that is inspirational, that is educational or motivational. Read what my friend Jim Rohn calls mental, nutri mental protein rather than mental candy. Not the newspaper, not the magazines. Don't watch television. Don't read the listen to the radio, but get up and take in mental protein. You see, the first 60 minutes of the day is often called the golden hour. This golden hour will change your life. One writer observed recently that men and women begin to become great when they begin to get up in the morning and spend 60 minutes with themselves, reading and thinking about how they can use that information to improve their lives. Uh, Henry Ward Beecher once wrote that the first hour is the rudder of the day because it sets the tone on everything that happens. Now, most people, unfortunately, they get up and they run around in circles, they're late for work, they scramble, they walk, run off, and their brain is scrambled for the whole day. But if you begin to get up and read 60 minutes every morning, fill your mind with mental protein, get set up for the day so you start to feel good about yourself, you start to develop focus, I can tell you this, this alone can give you your 1,000%. I had one man wrote to me who had been selling his same product for 13 years. He said in 27 days he tripled his income by reading for one hour every morning. He said he could not believe it. He read in sales and he read in communication and persuasion and time management. He read in subjects that helped him. He said he tripled his income in 27 days after working in his field for 13 years. Does it work? Just read 30 to 60 minutes a day. Every course I go to, every seminar, I say, how many people here started reading? Every person tells me it'll change your life to read 30 to 60 minutes every morning. Well, number two part of the 1,000% formula is to rewrite your major goals every day. 
Now, I learned this trick many years ago. I read it somewhere, heard it somewhere. I thought, well, I'll give it a try. What the heck? All of these things we say, you know, give them a try. Rewrite your major goals every day. Well, we've heard about the importance of rewriting your goals, you know, once a year and so on. But if you do it daily, and here's the key, write it in the present tense. Write your goals as though they were already a reality. If you want to earn a certain amount of money, write, I earn X number of dollars per year. If you want to weigh a certain amount, write, I weigh X number of pounds. If you want to accomplish a certain a sales goal or business goal or anything else, write it down as though it were already a reality in the present tense. You see, your subconscious mind is such that it can only take in information that is couched in the positive present personal tense. Positive means I earn X number of dollars. Present means now, and the uh, personal tense is I, me. When you say this, when you rewrite your major goals every day, then visualize your goals as a reality. Think of them as though you had already achieved them, and imagine what your life would look like if you had already accomplished that goal. You see, your subconscious mind is greatly affected by mental pictures. And the more you play this mental picture on the screen of your subconscious mind, the more your outer world will come to reflect the picture you're holding in your inner world. So, arise early, read 30 to 60 minutes, then rewrite your major goals each day. I can guarantee you this, that this process of rewriting your goals every single day in and of itself can give you your 1,000%. It is so powerful because it gives you direction, it programs your subconscious and your superconscious mind, it orients you, it activates your reticular cortex, which means you start to see all kinds of possibilities throughout the day where you can achieve your goals and, and so on. So, very important. Now, step number three is plan every day in advance. Plan each day in advance. Whoops, in advance. And plan each week in advance. One of the major reasons why people don't succeed is because they waste their time. The reason they waste their time is because they don't plan. You know, the very act of making a list of what you have to do for tomorrow will increase your productivity by 25%. If you make a list for what you have to do next week, it will increase your productivity by 25 to 50%. So here's the key. The key in planning is to write your list and organize it for the next day or the night before. That way you can fall asleep without worrying about forgetting what you have to do tomorrow. Second of all is plan each week the weekend before. If someone were to come to you and say, look, uh, are you going to be free around 3 o'clock Thursday afternoon? You should be able to check your book and say yes, no, and exactly where you'll be. Successful people always know where they're going to be. Unsuccessful people say, I don't know, geez, it beats me, or I, I don't think that far ahead. But successful people plan their time tight. They plan and organize their time. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you become successful and then plan your time in very small amounts? Or do you plan and use your time in very small amounts and then become successful? This is a chicken and egg thing. Many people think, well, as soon as I get really busy and successful, I'll plan my time well. No, you plan your time well now, and then you become very busy and successful. So number four is concentrate always on the number one use of your time. Now, I can tell you this, each of these is worth a thousand percent. If you were to plan every day in advance so that you knew what you were doing every minute of every day and using your time carefully and thoughtfully to high value, that alone would probably give you a thousand percent in a world where the average person is not doing it at all. If you were to concentrate single-mindedly on your number one task, the most important thing you could possibly be doing, and you worked on that single-mindedly every minute of every day, so you were always working on the most valuable thing you could be doing, that alone would give you your thousand percent. You see, the great majority of people don't realize that the reason they're failing is because they're doing things that are not making them successful. They are doing things that are leading to underperformance. Your job is to say, what is the most valuable use of my time, and then to do that and only that, and stay with it until it's 100% complete. Now, here's an important point. I'll call this 100% completion. It is this, is that when you accomplish a task that is important, when you do something and you get it finished, it gives you a, a rush psychologically. You feel good about yourself. You feel positive. It gets your adrenaline going. You feel, whew, and you get excited about doing something else. If you do something that's not very important, or you do something and you don't complete it, you get no buzz. It's like decaffeinated coffee. It has no caffeine in it. But if you concentrate single-mindedly on complete important tasks, 
you get excited and it becomes intrinsically motivating and it starts to drive you forward to accomplishing even more important tasks. Now, number five is listen to audio cassettes in your car. Listen to audio cassettes in your car, especially during the day. Why? It's because driving time, when you turn into learning time, can enable you to capture 500 to 1,000 hours during the working year that the average person spends just driving around. I had my whole life changed when I began listening to audio cassettes something like 15 years ago. I had never listened to them before because I said, well, you, know, you can't afford them, they cost too much. Besides, I like to listen to the radio, bingle bangle we call it chewing gum for the ears. I go around listening to the radio, and then I go out a set of audio cassettes. I said, oh, well, I'll try it out, you know, like I was reading a dirty book with a plain brown cover. And I started listening to audio cassettes, and I could not believe what is available on audio cassettes, just like what's available on this station now. I couldn't believe it. I began listening to, I became a, a, a fanatic on audio cassettes. I now have hundreds of sets of audio cassettes. And then over the years, you know what's happened? I meet successful people, multimillionaires, 100 millionaires, 200 millionaires, billionaires, multi-billionaires. And you know what? They all listen to audio cassettes in their car. The most successful people I have found are people who have entire libraries of audio cassettes. Never let your automobile be moving without educational audio cassettes playing and without you learning something as you go. Remember, the successful people today are not those who have more versus those who have less. It's those who know more versus those who know less. Now, number six key in this 1,000% formula is to ask two questions after every experience. If you're in sales, ask two questions after every call. If you're in business, ask two questions after every meeting. If, you're, if you've got teenage kids, ask two questions after every uh, discussion you have with them. But these two questions will make you rich. They will give you your 1,000% because they enable you to extract the very maximum value out of every experience you have. Question number one is, what did I do right? Do an instant replay, like in a football game where they replay the last play. What did I do right? And review the things that you did right. Because even if the situation worked out terribly, there was something that you did right. Second question you ask is, what would I do differently? What would I do differently? If I had this to do over again, how could I improve it? You see, the answer to both of these questions is positive. The answer to both of these questions forces you to think about what you did right and what you would do um, better in the future. And by thinking about them, you program them into your subconscious mind. Program them into your subconscious mind means the next time you're in a similar situation, you know what happens? Your subconscious mind is pre-prepared for you to do the things that you have previously reviewed. Asking these two questions on a regular basis, what did I do right and what would I do differently, are critical. Socrates, many years ago, wrote something, I'm sorry, Aristotle wrote something that I thought was very profound. And uh, Aristotle was a student of Plato, and Plato was a student of Socrates, and it was this. He said, all wisdom is a combination of knowledge plus reflection. Now, knowledge, or learning, um, is also combined with experience, and reflection means thinking about what has happened to you, thinking about what you did, thinking about what you learned and how you applied it and how you can use it in your life. Do you know why people don't go in wisdom today? It's because they don't use reflection. They don't take the time to say, what did I do right? What would I do differently? Number seven in this 1,000% formula is treat every person you meet like a million-dollar customer. Treat every person you meet like a million-dollar customer. Why? Well, because every person believes that they are the most important person in the world. Every person believes they're the most important person in the world. And if you treat them the way that they either believe they are or the way that they want to be, then they will respond to you in a positive way. I've worked with countless business people who have worked very hard for people who did not appear to have any possibility of ever developing into a good customer. And that person never did buy, but by gum, they recommended and referred their friends, and their friends made the salesperson or the business person rich. You know, there's two types of attitudes toward life today. One is the go-getter who is always looking for what they can get for themselves, and the other is the go-giver, the one who's always looking for what they can give. What we've learned about success is that successful people are go-givers. They are always practicing the law of sowing and reaping. When the law of sowing and reaping says that whatsoever you sow, so also shall you reap. What you put in, 
you get out. So if you make a habit of always looking for ways to help other people, do things for other people, make other people feel better, make people say, I'm glad I spoke to him, or I'm glad I spoke to her. And where do you start this? You start at home. You start at home. You remember that the people at home are the most important people in your world. And so therefore, teach, treat them like million-dollar customers. Tell them that you love them and you care about them. You know, if you kiss your spouse before you go off and tell your kids you love them before you start your working day, you'll be far more effective than if you don't. So treat people like million-dollar customers. And if you practice these seven things, there's one more. I said there was seven, seven plus one. The one more is quite simply, watch this network every single day. Watch these programs every single day. One idea on this program can be all it takes to change the whole direction of your life. One idea, one insight that hits you, hits you at the right time, at the right place, when you're in the right space, can change the whole direction of your life. That's happened to me countless times. In studying success, we find this, that the key to success is the development of habits. Successful people are those who develop good habits and make them their masters. Unsuccessful people are those who accidentally develop bad habits. And as someone has said very well, good habits are hard to form, but easy to live with. Bad habits are easy to form, but hard to live with. And what are the habits? They are habits of thinking and habits of doing. The first habit of thinking is that you have the capacity to be a great success in your life. The second habit of thinking is to think about continuous improvement, is that you can go from wherever you are to wherever you want to be if you work upon it and work on it just a little bit every single day. If you Get up each morning and spend 60 minutes reading so that you're constantly getting better as a person. Remember, reading is to the mind as exercise is to the body. If you rewrite your major goals every single day, it'll keep you focused on track all the time. 87, 97% of people have no idea who they are or where they're going in life. And if you continually rewrite your goals, you'll know all the time. Next is that you want to write, you want to plan every single day in advance. Plan every week in advance. Once you've planned it and set priorities on what you have to do, concentrate single-mindedly on one thing at a time. Keep your mind focused and discipline yourself to do just that one thing until it's done. Listen to audio tapes in your car. Use that as a learning opportunity over and over again. Remember, you can get 500 to 1,000 hours of the best information ever produced from this network and from other people simply by listening to audio cassettes as you drive around. Number six, ask two questions after every experience. What did I do right? What did I do right? What were the good things about what I did? And what would I do differently? If I could do that over again, what would I do differently? And write out the answers to these questions. By the way, if you're in business with other people, sit down and brainstorm. What did we do right? What could we do differently in the future to make it better? Treat every person you meet like a million dollar customer. Watch this network on a regular basis. And your goal is this. Your goal is to do these things over and over again. And you will manage it in 21 or 22 days, one month, do it over and over again until these things become a habit. When they become a habit, you'll feel more comfortable doing them than not doing them. They'll become automatic. And when you develop the habits that successful people have, then your success is guaranteed.